Hey, Ignite Church, it's Pastor Jason. Thank you so much for joining us for this special teaching series. We're really excited about all the new groups that are starting. For those of you groups that are already a part of our church family, again, welcome. Thank you for letting me back into your home and back into your group as we do this incredible study on the book of Jonah. Now, before we dive into the scripture, of course, Jonah is known as the reluctant prophet. He's one of these guys that, for those of you who grew up in Sunday school, you know him as the one that, that tried to run from God, that tried to flee from God. And the reason is God asked him to do something that he most certainly did not want to do. Um, we all have times in our life where we're expected to do things that we really would prefer not to do. Um, that happens with God. That happens with other authority figures like our bosses. It even happens with our parents. And I don't know about any of you, but um, I remember those teenage days when mom and dad wanted me to do something that like I was dead set against doing. And usually in those days, in that kind of situation, it was pretty interesting. So as an icebreaker question, before you jump into the scripture today, just talk about what was your reaction as a teenager to the times that your parents asked you to do something you didn't want to do? I mean, some of you were maybe a little more like me. I was kind of the conformist kid. Like, they tell me to do it, and I would suck it up. I'd grip my teeth, and I'd do it with a smile on my face. So I was kind of lying because I didn't really want to, but I would act like, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and, and do it reluctantly. Some of you, you were a little bolder than me, you know, braver. Absolutely not. You know, you were the resistor. You were the pusher. You're not going to do it. Some of you, you know, you were somewhere in between there. You know, you'd put up a fight, but in the end that you do it. So just take a second and, and just talk about what was it like for you as a teenager when you had to do something you didn't want to do. And if any of you have a specific example of like a time, hey, feel free to share that too. Before you come back to me though, I want you to do something a little different than our last study. Go ahead and read the entire first chapter of Jonah. I think it's only 17 verses. And so read the whole thing so you can get the context of everything we're talking about. And then I'll see you in just a second. Hey everyone, I hope that was a great icebreaker and I hope you had some good discussion. The reality is, at least a few times in our life, we've all had those moments where we probably didn't do the thing we were asked to do. Um, that, that happens to me actually more now as a grown up than it probably did as a teenager. And the, because the authority figure isn't mom or dad that I can see touching here. Now in our life, the authority figure is God. And the truth is, just like God called Jonah to do something that he didn't want to do, God often in our life calls us to do things that we want to do. Now, I'm assuming that you saw the message on Sunday. If you didn't, you know, maybe somebody in the group ought to fill in some of this, but the reality is Jesus continually asks us to do things that don't seem logical, that don't seem to make sense, and often that we don't want to do. But the truth is, and you know this, you're a follower of Christ, most of you are anyway, if we are willing to obey God, he always carries us through those things that we don't want to do. Now, when we look at the first couple verses of Jonah, it's really interesting. We have this request. Uh, we have God telling him to very specifically to reach out to a particular people group, you know, share the message with them. And the very next verse, Jonah's running the opposite direction. Um, and I talked about this a little bit on Sunday, but the truth is, guys, when he like finds a boat sailing in the wrong direction, it's not just him not going to Nineveh. Tarshish, like that was the complete opposite direction from Nineveh. So he, he is, you know, very physically and even more so emotionally and spiritually saying, God, I am rejecting your request. And not only am I like not going where you want me to go, I'm going the opposite direction. So today I want us to talk about this a little bit because we do this too. You know, in, in your own life, what are some things that God asks you to do that you don't want to do? What are some of the crazy commands of Jesus? What are some of the crazy commands of God in the Old Testament that seem to be ridiculous, but when you dive into them, you can see the wisdom, the truth, and the power of them. So take a little bit of time and just talk about that. What are some of the things that we're expected to do as Christians that are very, very challenging and very, very hard, and often, let's just be real, things that we don't want to do? Another thing I want you to discuss is too, like just like Jonah, we can always find a boat sailing in the wrong direction. We can always find a place that we can choose to go that's opposite of where God wants us to be. Have you ever done that in your life? And if so, just share that with your group. You know, tell a story of a time when you knew you should do this and you made the opposite decision. Sometimes it works out. Most of the time it doesn't work out and that's because God loves us. But I know that's gonna be some great discussion. So take a little bit of time, look through those first three verses and talk about, hey, what boats are we going on sometimes that we shouldn't? And what is God calling us to do that is really, really hard? All right, hey guys, it's me again. Thank you so much for taking some time and sharing some personal examples and, and making this real. The truth is, Jonah's story is so our story. And I love this first chapter because we have this guy, Jonah, a prophet, someone who should be following God, and he's running from God. And we see, we see the response of God in this particular situation. Now, God doesn't always allow or create physical storms to hinder us when we're not doing what he wants us to do. But I do think that often our disobedience causes us to face storms that maybe we wouldn't if we were willing to trust him and love him. 
him and follow him. And so Jonah, man, he jumps in his boat going the wrong way. And God literally brings up this incredibly scary, powerful storm. And Jonah's in the boat sleeping, resting. And the sailors, meanwhile, are up on the top of the deck trying to figure out a way. How is our boat going to make it through this storm? And it gets increasingly worse and worse and worse. And finally, these, these sailors, they realize there must be something supernatural going on because our weather charts aren't showing this should be happening. There's no reason why this should be happening. And so they, they pull up Jonah and they start casting lots, which basically means they roll dice. Like, why is this happening? Is it anybody's fault on the boat? And the dice land on Jonah. And they go to him and they say, what have you done? Because we know that this isn't normal and, and, and there's something going on. Like, there's a God involved in this. And Jonah shares with them, yeah, I'm, I'm running from the God that created the ocean. And, 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 and you have this powerful moment of the, of the supernatural where everyone on the boat is now understanding that when you run from God, it is a very, very bad idea. And so Jonah says, well, I did this. You know, the way to solve this is to get me off the boat. And of course, the sailors, they fight and they resist. And eventually they comply with that and the, and the storm ceases. You know, it's never a good idea. The truth is, it's never a good idea to run away from God. It's, it never makes sense logically to, to not do what he wants us to do. But, you know, talk about that a little bit. The first question I have for you guys is like, why is that foolish? Like we, we all probably as Christians agree that it is foolish. What are some of the real reasons why it's foolish for us to run from the direction and leadership that God has for us? And, and, and I want you to get deep into this. I know there are some basic Sunday school answers you can have, but the truth is everyone in your group probably isn't being fully 100% obedient to God in some part of their life. The reality is there are a lot of things that God would love for us to do, pray more, read more, study more, love our family. Like, there's a million examples that we're not doing. Why is it foolish for us to run from God when we have the choice to follow God. So, so take a second, talk about that. Another thing I want you guys to discuss as well is, you know, even when you, you don't understand it or, or flat out just want to reject it, why is it always a good idea to follow God? So I want you to look at this, this kind of same thing from, from both sides. Why is it foolish to run? But what are the blessings? What are the benefits? And what are the very real things that God does when we choose to obey him, choose to trust him, choose to love him, and choose to follow him? Take a second, discuss those two questions. Again, look at the scripture here in Jonah and, and see his story. And then I'll see you in just a second. Hey guys, it's me again, last time for today. It's been an amazing study and I hope that you're falling in love with this chapter of scripture the way that I love it because it is such a powerful story and the truth is we are in this story so very much. I mean, kind of finish this off today. I wanted to get, you know, real and, and, and apply, apply this. The truth is if, if we don't apply what we learn, then we've had a good study, our, our, our minds have been stretched, but I really think that Jesus wants to stretch not only your mind, but your life, your behavior, your attitudes, and, and, and your actions. And so today, um, just take a second, guys, and, and say, is there anything that you know, anyone in the, of you in your group, do you know that God really is trying to call you out to a point of obedience? You know, what area of your life have you not most fully and completely given to God? What are some things that he wants to do in your group? What are some things that he wants to do in your family? Take a second and talk about that and then really discuss what is the worst thing that can happen from you being obedient to God? In Jonah's situation, he really well could have died. There's every possibility going to Nineveh that he was going to a very hostile place where he could have died. So like, I, I, we understand his reason for disobedience. Most of the time in our own story though, you know, the, the penalties, the worst thing that can happen for, for being obedient to God isn't that bad. And a lot of times Satan wants us, wants to convince us that if we are faithful and we are true and, and we are trusting to God, that somehow it's going to ruin our life. And often that's not the case. So take a second and say, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen if you're obedient to God? Now, on the other side of that, what is the best thing that can happen if you're obedient to God? So if God's telling you to go reach that neighbor, you know, what's the worst thing? He curse you out. You know, he never want to invite you over to the cookout ever again. You know, what's the best thing? His entire family's life could be eternally changed and saved. You know, that's just one example of a million you could do. But really apply this. What's something you know God's calling you to do? What's the worst thing that can happen if you're obedient What's the best thing that can happen if you're obedient? And then what I really want you guys to do throughout the week, because small group is so much more in this meeting time, keep each other accountable and pray for one another in those areas of obedience and encourage one another to trust God. Because I'm telling you, the penalty for obedience is never as high as we think. And the blessing for obedience is often so much higher than we can imagine. It's been a blessing to be here with you for the first week of Jonah. Can't wait to see you next week. Have some great discussion. And I'm hoping you're going to apply everything that you bring forward in your group today.